We'll take a look at the style palette in this movie and get a real top level view of what it does, what it can do, and some ways that we're going to be using it as we continue on through the series. I have a scene that just opened up when I launched anime, and again, these scenes change unless you've changed those preferences. This happens to be the pirate instead of some of the other ones that we've got. And I have opened up the pirate bone layer and come all the way down here inside of that and selected a layer called body. There's also one called dress in here as well. The style palette is how things look. While we come over to the tools palette and we make things and change how we're going to look at things by changing scenes, cameras, and how things bend, if you want to control the color or anything, that's what the style palette is for. And you would guess that based upon the little color swatches we have here. Now, while you may not be able to see the entire menu in this movie, the entire menu is there and you can completely read all the swatch options that are available to you. Know that these swatches can change when you work on your own characters and there's some nice presets in here to work with. If you're producing for broadcast television, you also have some NTSC PNG files you can work with. Some other nice things though is that some of these presets you can work in here give you some nice harmonious colors. And this is just a photo and you can go ahead and click anywhere in here and pick up a real nice common palette of colors to work with. Kind of cool. But let's talk about how some of these work. We've got a fill and a stroke, and as you would guess, that is how things are filled with color and the stroke that goes around the outside. It says white and black. Why is that? Because I have the dress selected, but we can clearly see that the dress is not that color. Well, it has to do with selecting the shape that's there. This right here doesn't automatically inherit whatever you selected in the layers palette. You actually have to activate the shape because on any given layer, you might have multiple shapes. So right out of the gate, it may not seem to make a lot of sense to have to do that, but that's why it keeps you from making mistakes and changing certain colors that you may not want to change. By clicking on the dress, we get this little checkerboard pattern, and now our style palette becomes active. We see that the stroke and fill color are very, very similar, but one is a little bit darker than the other. We can also see the width of the stroke line is 5.93 points. There's also an effect that's been applied to this called a gradient. Now this is where you can individually go in and change these items to your heart's content. You can also copy some of these settings and paste them into other shapes as you draw them while you're working on your scene. But here's where things get interesting, and before I actually hop into that, I need to point out that these special effects are accessed while you can click and choose some of the presets like this right here. You can also come over here and click on this little dotted icon which gives you the unique effects for whatever it is you have selected. So in this case, since the effect was gradient, and I went and clicked on the settings button right here, I have settings to work with for the gradient. If I change that to something else like Halo, we would have a different set of tools in here to work. So again, that's part of the dynamic nature of the palette system inside of Anime Studio Pro. So we can change the colors. Great, I got that. We can copy and reset that. Got that too. If we choose a special brush, it will show up here. That's one of the options we can work with, but look what happens when I click on the Advanced tab. When I do that, suddenly our presentation changes up here. I'm getting shape names, I'm getting styles up here, and there are no styles selected right now. This is something we'll get into in significant detail in the future because when you work on characters, it's nice to change, for example, the color of the legs simultaneously, by working with one control instead of going in and reselecting all these different shapes. Styles allow you to create a look that you can go ahead and use throughout your animation and ensure consistency between shapes or characters that have that color. And if you want to change it across the entire animation, all you have to do is change the style and it changes everything that's attached to that style. It's just a smart way to go. So we've got similar types of controls here but with the advanced tab clicked. This lets you go in and create custom looks that you then can save. So if we wanted to, we could actually name this style right now, but we'll get to that in some movies coming up as well. So some of the controls look the same, but when we disclose them with the advanced tab, their function suddenly changes into the ability to create custom looks rather than modifying looks, which is what happens when we close that up and we just have it like this. If we were looking through our entire character area here, we can disclose and make this a very long list. I need to point out that you can actually separate the style palette from the layers palette and give yourself a little more screen real estate. To do that, you can simply come to the window pull down 
and choose Style. There is a keyboard shortcut, and again, since I'm working on a Mac, it happens to be the Command right bracket, but check the keyboard shortcut if you're working on the PC as well. I'll go ahead and select this, and what it does is it pops the Style palette away from the Layers palette. So this does give me the ability to go ahead and see the entire Style palette and the entire Layer palette all at the same time. If I want it to nest back in there again, it doesn't have a drag and drop function yet. I just come over to Windows, I come back down to Styles again, click on it, and it sets itself back in there. 